and the pocket biggie era. Mm -hmm. Um, you was around for that. Oh, shit. He, he, he was a hot nine seven at that time. Oh, shit. So you was up close and personal with it, man. Um, two pocket biggie. That's part of the conversation today, just you know, uh um, with Keefe D being arrested and everything like that, that's a whole nother story. But being there in that moment, because we only seeing what we see on TV and we only seeing what we can read in magazines. You there in real time at the station seeing this. Kind of bring us to that dynamic and the energy that was going on around that time. Okay, so, you know, um, when Tupac got shot, I was... I believe I was DJing in North Carolina. Now, I have a standing rule for me. I can't speak for nobody else, but I have a standing rule. If it's a big event, and there's going to be a lot of rich niggas there, black niggas, like some music, and I know it's going to be ignorant niggas, any large gathering of niggas that's rich or big gatherings and shit like that, I don't go. I don't go. If, 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 if it's an award ceremony, if I'm not getting an award, I'm not there. Because when you put all these powerful niggas together, you got their entourages, now you got niggas that's in, that's doing some other street shit on the side, anything can happen. So I try to, one, one thing I try to do is shut the up and stay in my lane. All right. So uh, the MGM and the Mike Tyson fight through Sheldon, that's a good night again. A lot of rich niggas, a lot of niggas, money, flashing, showing off, whatever. I said, I don't want to be no in there. I find out it made me about 5 o'clock in the morning at Tupac in the shot. I'm probably coming right out of the club. Like, like I've been out of the club like two hours. I'm back in my room doing my work, you know, looking at what, happened, what I did for the night. And the first thing that I said was, that nigga going to be all right. Because he had got shot before him. Man, that nigga, that nigga gonna smoke a Newport and walk it off, take a shower. He gonna be, he gonna be Gucci. And then around the, you know, so we go back in the Hot 97 the next day. People are talking about it. Boom, 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 boom. Around the sixth day, something told me, this ain't Gucci, man. Like, this, this, this ain't, this ain't, this ain't it, man. Like, I, I'm, I feel like I should have heard something better by now. And then um, I think like on the sixth or seventh day, they um, they said the Tupac died, and all I really remember was Angie Klein. I believe I remember Angie Klein, like Angie, Angie Martinez, people, Angie Klein, and um, I don't know if I was in the studio or I was listening to the radio driving to the studio because remember at that time. Hot 97 was the news. Yeah. So if something happened, you got in your car and you immediately, like if some, you find out something happened, you immediately, no matter what time you were on the radio, you got in your car and you went there because at that time, with news like that, we shut the city down. So um, I don't know if I was on the way to the studio or in the studio. I remember Angie crying. That's one thing I remember Angie crying. Tupac was a wild boy, man. He was, he was, he was a wild boy, man. He was, he, was just, he was just a wild dude like that. Um, I knew Tupac. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say I knew him super well, but I've had interactions with Tupac. Very, very funny and wild dude. Yeah. Yeah, man, nah, because I, I just remember the East and the West on the magazines and then, you know, Pac would say on records. And I was a kid at this time, so I didn't really understand how serious things was myself. I was just here for the entertainment side of it. And and I love the music. So I'm I'm somebody I always love the music. So whenever I hear this or that, then we see things go down at the award shows with Suge Knight. Was you, I mean, you was in the mix for that also. Okay, so again, yeah. Source Awards. A lot of rich niggas, yeah. um, a lot of, lot of dangerous ones, standing order, I'm not going to be there. Yeah. I don't need to be there. Yeah. If I'm not accepting an award or I'm not performing or I'm not giving out an award, not there. Yeah. Um, you know, and that was my, my thing is I need to stay the way. Gotcha. Just gotcha. stay, like, stay the way, right? Um, but I remember... 
hearing that. You don't want somebody dancing in the videos. You don't want to come to Jeff Rock. And I knew right then and there that this is going to be a real problem. Because Suge was getting super, super aggressive. And this is Suge before the barber hit him or whatever. And when, when just the word Suge would, just seeing that dude walk somewhere would, would put everybody in fear. And, um, and, um, you know, it's just it's just one of them things, man. It's it's, it's one of them one of them things. I know, I knew we were in a bad place when that happened. Yeah. I also knew that Tupac knew who shot. Him. He knew who shot. Him. He knew he knew what it was, and he knew who he was with. And you knew that you knew that Biggie didn't have no, nothing to do with that. Shit. You knew the niggas you was with. Those dudes are nobody to fucking play with. We all know the names, and we and I'm here to tell you, those are no with them dudes. It's not sweet. So if you know that, and you were told not to fuck with them, and you went and fuck with them anyway, you want to put it on your man's when your man's was the main one who told you, your family, do not with these dudes, but you want to do that? Yeah. Come on, man. And then you took, and also another thing is, I believe that Tupac took that as a marketing opportunity. So you, so in my personal opinion, Tupac marketed himself into death. Because, because to be honest with you, he knew what it was, man. Like, like here's the thing, if you don't know what it is, then I respect that. You know the niggas you was rocking with. And it, as, as it says in the movie, as it says in real life, the, the facts are facts. Dudes came to him and said, yo, bro, be easy. These are serious things. Like serious, serious dudes. The names that, that he was hanging with in, in the business at the time, you knew if you see them niggas, you better get out of there if that's not what you're looking for. So at, at that time when Tupac was going at everybody on the East, did, did behind the scenes, just anybody you ran across in the radio station or running around in the streets, was it coming off to the artists on the East Coast as, man, this is going to blow over? Oh, no, 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 no. Let me, I even make it, I even take it one step further. Yeah. We, High 97, had a sister station our actual sister station in Los Angeles was called Power 106. Power 106 is a dude named Big Boy. And at the time, um, Big Boy, I don't even know if Big Boy was on at the time, might have been the Baker Boys who had actually put um, Big Boy on. We knew that we, as Hot 97 employees, we don't go out there. We don't go out there because that's not the place for you to be right now. And we would just dudes on the mic. Now we would, again, this is the beginning. This is no other station but Hot 97 doing hip hop really, except the Power 106 at that point. Again, with all the celebrities along with the artists, you knew, don't take your over there. So, and that was because we knew how serious it was. Here's a thing. Of course, sugar is dangerous. Of course, all them dudes that you hear about now, Mom, Jane, One Tree, uh, BJ, the, uh, the Bounty Hunter, all them dudes, of course, they was part of that world. Those dudes were dangerous. We know that. That's a fact. You can hear from the stories and everything that they was dangerous dudes. But even more dangerous is the nigga that's just a fucking... Got a, a, a groupie, a rider, a nigga with a band, happy to have a bandana and thinking he's a part of Not even a part of just angry. Yo, man, fuck that. I'm from the West Coast. Those are the niggas that's dangerous. Yeah. And you can run into those dudes at any time. We know who Death Row was. We know that's like, a, that's like fighting in a conventional war. You know the niggas that wear green are the enemy. And you know, they know that you guys wear black are the enemy. But what about the guys that nobody knows? They come out in the middle of nowhere with a gun. Those are the most dangerous people. So 
you know, we, I, I was very aware that, again, for me, the way that I operate on a regular basis is do my job and stay out the way. So I only understood from the beginning, stay out the way, do not go out there. And, you know, it was understood to an extent and, and, and relayed to us by management, keep your ass out of Los Angeles. Keep your ass out of the West Coast in general. Yeah. 